Shanghai guys it's just a hot sticky muggy day here in the great state of Texas in uh, the shithole state <coughs> of Texas here is on this on this well it was gloomy just another blah Saturday morning here in the end times uh, that would be Saturday where are we? April 30th, 2022. Good Lord, we are one-third of the way through. Uh, one-third of the way through 2022. So, guys, uh, obviously I cannot uh, sit back silently for, for one more day. Uh, without bringing in some commentary on the newest, biggest uh, <laughs> debate going around. And that's basically how the U.S. government has finally, let's see, 1984, we're 38 years late, how the uh, U.S. government has finally uh, officially joined the Orwellian nightmare by creating essentially the Ministry of Truth, where the uh, federal government uh, has decided, you know, it, it, it is time for the government to tell Americans uh, what they can believe and, and what they can't. So any, anyway, guys, I tried to keep my mouth shut yesterday, but I... Uh, I had the very uh, disquieting, is that the word, experience last night. I actually sat down and listened to Tucker Carlson ranting about the, uh, the you know, the Ministry of Truth, whatever it's called, uh, and... You know, listening, listening to this blathering, bloviating, uh, right-wing, uh, you know, conspiracy wacko, talking all his crap, uh, making, a, you know, making a mockery out of what we really need to be having a conversation about. You, you know, just taking the subject of this and, 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 and just, just poisoning the whole subject for anybody with a fucking brain uh, wanting to talk about what's going on in this country as, you, you know, this, this march, this steady march towards fascism, which this is just the latest uh, easily predictable. I'm surprised it took 38 years to get here uh, from 1984. But anyway, uh, listening to the guy and, uh, and, and, and trying to survive, uh, he finally got to the point. But, but of course, I, I, I found myself um, agreeing w w with what a lot of the guy w what he was talking about this uh, th this right-wing cretin uh, talking about that it's anybody who goes the, the the ultimate goal of this is to further muzzle and silence anybody who goes up against the narrative whatever the narrative of the day now where I parted company with Tucker is that he's claiming this is all lefties. This is all about lefties and, and that uh, anybody, any quote conservative who goes up against the lefty narrative. Okay, this is where uh, I, I part company with him. It, it makes no fucking difference. It has nothing to do whether the narrative is the lefty narrative or the right-wing narrative. Uh, it, it doesn't matter who controls the narrative. As I was saying to my um, to my friend, you know, who's a huge fan of Tucker Carlson, you know, my 
my Trump tart, uh, my Trump voting uh, Tucker Carlson, Alex Jones cheering friend where I'm staying with, I, you know, I was pointing out to her this is, has nothing to do with the left or the right. It's whoever controls the narrative, which is going to shift uh, depending on who's in the White House. <clears throat> uh, of course, the details of the narrative are going to shift, and who's ever uh, you, you know, quote, in power uh, is going to be using this to their advantage to uh, control their narrative by silencing anybody who questions it. But of course, and, and uh, what, what I want to talk about is the Doomer angle, since obviously nobody is talking about it. Uh, so we're going, so I'm going to sit here and talk about the Doomer uh, angle of this whole thing. Uh, as a Doomer who agrees 100% with Tucker Carlson that this is bullshit. Uh, this Ministry of Truth or whatever they call it, we'll find out. So then... Uh, I, but before I get into the Doomer angle, I uh, want to, uh, you, you know, it, it's being, uh, of course, it's being already all over, you know, Huff Post and the lefty media talking about how it is these right wing Republicans are the only ones who would have any problem with this. And so then I wake up this morning to find this column from that little lefty, that hard line, uh, old school lefty, Caitlin Johnstone, weighing in. And, and I'm sitting here and reading this piece and saying, where have I heard this before? And, and it was like Caitlin Johnstone was taking notes on what I was saying to, uh, to my friend last night. Uh, so before we get in, because Caitlin Johnstone uh, is, you know, one of the old school uh, non-limp dick lefties. Uh, out there. So this is her reading of it, which I think I'm only going to read uh, part of this. I'm not getting into all of the Ukraine stuff. Uh, but anyway, this is the single most intelligent commentary I have read about the new Ministry of Truth. Uh, take it away, Sister Caitlin, and then we're going to come back and talk about doomers. So uh, now, of course, the headline could be pretty much about anything on the planet. Uh, I, I wasn't even sure what she was getting ready to talk about. She headlined her today's rant, oh God, it's going to get so much worse. All right, take it away, Caitlin. Rightists, I love uh, her word rightist, meaning, you know, these right-wingers. Rightists have spent the last couple of days freaking out and invoking Orwell's 1984 in response to something their political enemies are doing in America. And for once, it is for a pretty good reason. The Department of Homeland Security has secretly set up a, quote, disinformation governance board only <clears throat> informing the public about its plans for the institution after it had already been established. The disinformation board, which critics have understandably been calling a ministry of truth, purportedly exists to fight disinformation coming out of Russia as well as messages about the U.S.-Mexican border, uh, blah, blah, blah. But we may be certain that the emphasis, you know, today, the emphasis in the board's establishment has been on the Russian angle. 
White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki in her patented you're such a crazy idiot for questioning me about the White House manner dismissed alarmed questions about what specific functions this strange new DHS entity was going to be performing and what its authority will look like. Quoting uh, Jen Psaki, quote, it sounds like the objective of the board is to prevent disinformation and misinformation <clears throat> from traveling around the country in a range of communities. I'm not sure who opposes that effort, close quote. <laughs> Back to Caitlin. The answer to the question, who opposes that effort, is of course anyone with functioning gray matter between their ears. No government entity has any business appointing itself the authority to sort information from disinformation on behalf of the public because government entities are not impartial and omniscient deities who can be entrusted to serve the public as objective arbiters of absolute reality. They would, with absolute certainty, wind up drawing distinctions between information, misinformation, and disinformation in whatever way serves their interest regardless of what is true exactly as any authoritarian regime would do. The, the imp this important point has gotten a bit lost in the shuffle due to the utter hypnotic ridiculousness of the person who has been appointed to run the Disinformation Governance Board, Nina Jankowicz, a carefully groomed swamp creature who has worked in Kiev as a communicator communications advisor to the Ukrainian government as part of a Fulbright Fellowship is being widely criticized by pundits and social media users for her virulent Russia-gating and whatever the hell this is. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Tucker Carlson playing the same thing. Anyway, I, uh, I'm not going to spend any more time, but because of this person's embarrassing cartoonishness, a lot more commentary lately has been going into discussing the fact that the Department of Homeland Security's Ministry of Truth is run by a kooky liberal than the fact that the Department of Homeland Security has a fucking Ministry of Truth. Which is really to miss the forest for the trees, in my opinion. Would it really be any better if the Disinformation Governance Board was run by a chill dude you wouldn't mind having a beer with? especially when we know the ideological leanings of this department are going to bounce back and forth between elections and will always act in service of U.S. Empire narrative control regardless of who is in office. I don't think so. The real issue at hand is the fact that this new institution will almost certainly play a role in bringing the ever-narrowing gap between government censorship and Silicon Valley censorship. The creation of the DHS Disinformation Board is a 
far more shocking and frightening development than last year's scandalous revelation that the White House was advising social media platforms <clears throat> about accounts it determined were circulating censorship-worthy COVID misinformation, which was itself a drastic leap in the direction toward direct government censorship from what had previously been considered normal. We should probably talk more about how as soon as people accepted that it was fine for government media and Silicon Valley institutions to work together to censor misinformation and rally sub public support around an official narrative about a virus, the ruling power establishment immediately took that as license to do that with a war in foreign government as well. And then she goes off on the Ukraine stuff, uh, which I'm going to skip over. And wrapping up her rant today, the question of whether we should abandon all hope of ever becoming a truth-based society and committing instead to winning propaganda wars for a globe-spanning empire is perhaps the most consequential decision we've ever had to make as a species, which is why we were not given a choice. It has been foisted upon us whoever controls the narrative. This makes no difference whether the narrative is being controlled by Joe Biden, Donald Trump, the deep state, the global corporatocracy, uh, social media, whoever controls the narrative controls the world by taking our control of information out of our hands without asking our permission and determining for us that we are to be a propaganda-based civilization for the foreseeable future, they have stolen something sacred from, from us, something they had no right to take. Nothing about the state of the world tells us that the people who run things are doing a good job. Nothing about our current situation suggests that they should be given more control rather than having control taken away from them and given to the people. We are going in exactly the wrong direction. Amen. Uh, Sister Caitlin Johnstone, uh, hallelujah. Uh, so, Caitlin Johnstone, uh, a lot, uh, you, you know, as I was, agreeing with Tucker Carlson. When uh, Caitlin Johnstone and Tucker Carlson uh, I, I agree uh, are, are hitting the bullshit detected button, probably some bullshit uh, has been detected. Uh, uh, of course, as I say, that uh, unlike that mental midget uh, Tucker Carlson, the little lefty, the real uh, old school lefty Caitlin Johnstone understands it makes no difference uh, who controls uh, the narrative. Uh, the whole point of this is, is to quash anybody questioning whatever the official narrative du jour is and, and not letting us make up uh, our own minds, and this is going to be the segue to what, of course, uh, Tucker Carlson, Caitlin Johnstone, and uh, 
every I, I, I so far in, in researching this, obviously, guys, uh, being a doomer, I, I have never found one person talking about the doomer angle of this. And this is what, uh, you know, as a doomer, my biggest problem with all of this, th th this censorship crap, uh, is that the official narrative, and my guess is that Caitlin Johnstone and Tucker Carlson in 99.9% in of the planet agree that the official narrative is that you can have infinite growth on a finite planet. It is the number one narrative being drilled into our heads cradle to grave. The sanctity of human life that it is the economy stupid. Uh, it is the number one official narrative that is that that is as viciously defended by Joe Biden as it is by Donald Trump, the deep state, everybody in between. It is the biggest fucking lie uh, on the planet. It is the lie that is killing the planet that you can have infinite growth on a finite planet. And to state the obvious fact that you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet, you know, which is what makes somebody a doomer who's pulled their head out of their ass to realize this, it is the most subversive statement that you can make. You cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. It, 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 the single most subversive statement, it subverts the dominant paradigm. It subverts the, you know, the number, it, it is the official narrative to end all official narratives that we can have, a fi that we can have infinite growth on a finite planet, which is another way of saying there's too fucking many people on this planet eating too much stuff. It, you know, that's what my favorite billionaire with five kids, Ted Turner, w was saying 30 years ago. It's too many people eating too much stuff. There's too fucking many people on this planet, which is another way of saying you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet but what what you know what so what what gets me is apparently uh apparently uh on youtube right now it's totally fine to come out and say as uh, some people we know ha have been saying for years it's totally fine to come out here on YouTube and say you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. It's fine to come out here on YouTube and say there's too goddamn many people on the planet uh, w w without getting your video ripped down. It's fine, you, you know, to, uh, to claim that the number one overriding immigration policy anywhere on the planet uh, should be, as the, you, you know, anybody crossing any border in any direction, uh, the, the number one thing that they do is get sterilized before entering a new country. It's safe to say that. Uh, it, it, it's, it's safe to say that you cheerlead uh, and fully support the involuntary sterilization of the human race. All of this is fine today on YouTube, uh, which is all just various ways of saying you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. 
it is the belief that you can have finite infinite growth on a finite planet that is killing this planet and and, and so far you're, you're not in danger uh, of, of being censored and silenced and and I guess the only reason for it is because anybody to make such a statement anybody to make such a statement that there's too fucking many humans on the planet and we need to get rid of humans that the the problem on the planet is humans that's the problem the solution to the problem of humans is to get rid of humans but I guess if you say that that, that you don't that that doesn't trip any so far it doesn't trip any little uh, YouTube social media uh, disinformation governance board uh, little cop bots because there's such a tiny few of us out there saying it that we can still say it because the the the, the idea that uh, you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet it is it is it is so down in such a tiny little rabbit hole that nobody cares because we are completely irrelevant that doomers uh, are, are the single most irrelevant and I would say despised uh, humans on the planet but, but this nobody uh, outside of this tiny little community has ever considered the notion 99.9% of this planet has never considered the notion you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. Uh, the, the, the very notion has never occurred to them. If you were to point it out to 99.9% .9 of the planet, they would have no fucking clue what you're talking about if you suggested that the problem on the planet was humans and the solution to the problem of humans is to get rid of the humans you would be viewed as just some you, you, you know uh, gibberish spouting a uh, mentally ill street person you would be you 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 would just be you would be so marginalized uh, you're, you're not even worth the effort to create a, a cop bot to shut you up so ironically doomers have the freedom to say we need to get rid of humans off the damn planet you you make a you, you barely question uh, the, the you know what official narrative uh, out there and you will uh, have your video if not your channel ripped down but uh, eventually eventually uh, more and more people are going to realize you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet at some point uh, as this shit show comes down as this house of cards goes up in flames uh, more and more people are going to realize you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet more and more people are going to realize that uh, the problem on the planet is humans and the solution is to get rid of humans uh, and when that critical mass is reached to start ringing alarm bells, uh, you better fucking believe that the doomosphere uh, will, will be will, will draw some attention, and it makes no fucking difference who is controlling uh, the official narrative uh, that you can have. Uh, infinite growth on a finite planet because the official narrative is shared by everybody.
nobody wants to hear you, that you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. Nobody wants to hear that the fucking problem on this planet is too many humans on it. Nobody wants to hear the final solution to the final problem. And uh, at this point, we can take advantage of it, but, but uh, any doomer uh, laughing this off uh, that that what this is 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 just the latest completely predictable uh, no shit Sherlock tightening of the noose and uh, we will be muzzled it's not a matter of if it's only a matter of when uh, that the doomers uh, are going to be shut down by, uh, you, you know, the, the owners uh, of the official narrative. Um, whether that be, uh, you know, I, of course, Caitlin, you know, talking about the U.S. Empire narrative, that's certainly a big part of the, the U.S. Empire narrative, sure as shit, it is uh, the, the leading example of uh, you can have infinite growth on a finite planet. Uh, the U.S. empire is completely centered on, on, that, the, uh, on that big fucking lie. So she's right about that, but it's bigger than Caitlin realizes. But the bottom line is, oh God, it's only going to get so much worse. So get out there and enjoy your doomer freedom to uh, to call this shit out while you still can. And with that, I'm going to wrap up uh, this little rant. And uh, Saturday, I guess where that little eco pussy Sam Mitchell is going to go over there to Collapse Chronicles, and uh, we're going to talk about. Uh, cows wearing masks to save the planet. You can find that over at uh, Collapse Chronicles for this subversive rant. Bye, guys.